Hey guys, today I'm going to go through a few tips that I have found to help make my freeze drying process go a lot faster, smoother, and easier. So we're going to jump right in. First tip I got for you guys is when you buy your freeze dryer, get the silicone mats because these things are a game changer. We've tried freeze drying food right on these pans and it sticks to it and it's hard to get it off. Now the alternative is you can go and buy parchment paper or wax paper and use that on the on the tray instead, but then you're having to buy that over and over again. These are super slick. They're very easy to clean. Once you get the food on here, it's frozen. It usually sticks to here, but you pull it up. You can rip the uh, food off really easily. That's a nice tip. Makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with frozen solid foods. The other thing is clean up is easier. I take this mat off. Now this tray is ready to go. If I want to do some liquids in it, don't need to clean the tray. It, it doesn't get dirty. Tip number two I have for you. Get yourself two sets of these trays. I have 10 trays, so I can put five in here at a time. While these five are freeze drying, I fill the next trays and I put them in my freezer to dry so they're ready to roll. Come harvest time, this freeze dryer is running nonstop 24 seven. And having the extra set of trays is, is huge to be able to keep up with the demand of freeze drying. The next tip I have for you, get yourself a little fan like this. I will leave a link in the description down below for you to this fan, because this fan I know works, it fits perfectly. The, the cover fell off and it actually makes it easier to fit in here. But what I will do to defrost this thing faster is when I get to the end of the cycle, I'll hit warm trays. I'll stick this fan in here. I'll turn it on high. I'll stick the fan in here on the side like this and I'll shut the door. And what that does is it blows that heat around and it thaws it out much faster. So um, I usually only run it for about five, maybe 10 minutes. And that's enough to warm everything up enough to let the ice let loose from the side. And I come down here and I cancel the defrost and uh, let it sit for another five to 10 minutes because what that's gonna then do is cool down all these heating elements again so it's ready for the next load. It's even cooler uh, and it takes less time to cool down. So then I pull this guy out and I pull out the whole tray and all the ice and everything out with it, discard it, wipe everything down, shove it back in and I'm ready to roll. While I am taking the food off the trays, this is defrosting. And so I just come back down here when I'm done unloading the food off the trays and clean this thing out and I can load it back up again. No more waiting a day, half a day, whatever to, to defrost it. Now, if you're not in a big hurry, but you'd like to get something through a little faster, you want to save a little money on electricity, I'll just take this fan and set it just like that. And then that'll just blow air in and circulate it around and cool it down much faster than just letting it sit. And, and defrosting that way. Another fun fact about this little fan, when I'm not using it to defrost this, I will put this guy, because it's got such a small cord, which is, is quite convenient, I'll put them in the freezer. And I just drop it in the freezer, and when I put my trays in there, it moves that air around and freezes the food five, six times faster. So I could put something in normally and, and let it sit overnight, and it still isn't frozen solid. If I put this fan in there, most things are frozen solid within an hour or two. I mean, it, it's incredible what this does inside the freezer to freeze your food and, and speed the process up of freezing. All right, another tip I have for you is new ones are different, so you'll have to figure out how yours works if it's not the same as mine. But on these Harvest Right freeze dryers, they are set standard for uh, extended final dry is usually two hours, right? And then after that two hours, it's done freeze dry. Sometimes it would end its cycle at night. I'd come down in the morning and the trays have gotten cold. So when you pull it out, then the food condensates and you get moisture on it on the trays and everything. And then I'll also find, oh shoot, it wasn't running long enough. So what I have found that works the best for that is I change my extended dry time up to 12 hours. So now I know that when it's on its final dry and it's at 10 hours. That is the standard factory setting. And so I'll wait until it gets to the, the 10 hour mark. Usually I let it go a little longer because most case I found it that um, it takes more than that two hours. Usually I gotta run for an extra hour or two. So I'll let it run down to about that, that eight to 10 hour mark. And sometimes it'll go longer because I'll forget about it. It just gives me more time to uh, unload it and not have to unload it right then and there. Another good tip is this mat. For some reason, everything likes to stick to it. And 
it gets dirty. So before I close it up, a lot of times I'll take a wet rag and just wipe it down so the seal is wet. It just seals onto this window a lot nicer. I've had it where I didn't do that and there'll be some like fuzzies and whatnot that'll break that seal and sometimes I get a vacuum error. So another tip I have for you is a lot of times I'll get an error message on the screen here that'll say it's, it's too hot, may cause it to run for whatever longer period of time. I know right now it's saying I need to change the oil. A quick easy fix for that is I put an extra fan right here. So during the hotter months, I turn this fan on just to help blow more air in and cool down the coils faster so it runs more efficiently. And then in turn, this thing runs uh, for less time. So when we bought ours, we had a couple of different options on different pumps that we could buy. You could buy the premium pump and oilless pump or the standard pump that came with it. And we decided to go with the premium pump. But one thing that we found was some mornings we'd wake up and we'd have a bunch of haze in our house that uh, it's, it's actually oil vapor. And I didn't really care to breathe that in. And they say, you know, there's a vacuum leak or whatever that causes that or the filter gets plugged up and... I found that I had a good seal, I was getting the right vacuum, you know, and they, they recommended cleaning the filter. Well, that just didn't seem to work and I didn't want to risk it. So what I did is I, this used to be our old laundry room. So I had this dryer vent with a hole in the, in the outside uh, exhausting the air. So this four inch tube fits perfectly over this cover that was on here and there's these little grooves here that allow the air to pass through here. So whenever the pr compressor turns on, I have a T back there that also turns on this little air duct vent. And I'll leave a link in the description for you on this. It's just a very low uh, CFM. I mean, it, if, if you have it running, you can hardly feel any air movement, but it's just enough to suck the air past here a little bit of air passed here and exhausted outside. The other thing that that's gonna do for you is if you're doing onions in the freeze dryer, if you don't have this set up, your house is gonna just reek of onions. So when we're doing onions in the freeze dryer or, or very potent food and you go outside, we have a patio on the other side of the house right here where this is exhausting and you sit out there, it just reeks of onions or you know the smell of whatever's in the freeze dryer is very uh, strong out there rather than in the house so that was another perk another plus of doing this venting on the the vacuum pump one thing we always try to do when we're freeze drying is we try to pre-freeze all of our food before it goes in the freeze dryer so we'll load up our trays and put them in the freezer the freezer is just more efficient to to run it's already running and then this thing is running for less time. Another tip I have for you is this guy right here. I don't know if you could see it in the video, but this is a camera that is mounted uh, to the ceiling that shines down on the screen. So at any point in time, I can just pull up on my phone, look at it and say, okay, well, I've got, you know, an hour left and I need to get in here and get the freeze dryer unloaded. Some of the favorite things that we like to freeze dry around here, number one would be applesauce. This is what it looks like after it's done. We spread it out in the trays, we cut it up into squares. And they are a delicious snack. Everybody who's tried them, like, you've got to start selling them. These are amazing and uh, nothing but good things about them. It's our favorite. Onions uh, right here. We've got some freeze-dried apples, freeze-dried eggs. The freeze-dried eggs, we scramble them, and then we just pour them into a tray, freeze them, and then throw them in here. So these guys here are just going to add uh, water. But actually, my favorite thing to do with the eggs, instead of adding water to reconstitute them, I will add milk and it just gives more of a full flavor, better tasting. So I actually prefer freeze-dried eggs over regular eggs. This is our uh, fresh salsa. It's a fermented salsa that we really like. And we, more often than not, we use this for seasoning. Now, we go through a lot of this as just regular old seasoning when we're making tacos or anything Mexican or different soups and what have you. Uh, this is ground beef. This is a great thing to have around for a quick meal. We'll throw together like spaghetti or something and just dump a can of this in there now when you do meat the texture isn't the same but when you do it in like spaghetti and it's ground like this you don't really notice it so it's a it's a win for us i hope this video helps you guys with your freeze drying process hope that some of these tips and tricks you can implement and uh, help speed up uh, your freeze drying experience if you like this video please hit that subscribe button and follow me along i like to post different tips and tricks that i do around my homestead to help make my life easier and i'd like to share them with you so 
hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.